Spirited practices I remember seeing from start to finish. What are your thoughts on the action today? Um, we've had competitive practices thus far. Um, love the competitiveness, love the energy. You know, uh, they're showing a passion for the game, and then we got to make sure that we're getting better at football and that uh, emotion is directed the right way. Um, for the most part, of it is. And there's some times when we can refocus it, so has we got to continue little, to work on that. Has it been a little bit more chippy than past fall camps? Mm, yeah, I think that's probably fair to say. Yeah, got a lot of new people, uh, a lot of uh, competition within positions, and uh, you, know, there's, you want competitiveness. This is a competitive, physical game. It's a violent game. It, uh, it's not for the weary, and uh, we also have to understand how to channel those emotions in that fashion and uh, use it to our advantage and not not to where it gets a point that it hurts the individual or the team. Is it the fact that there's so many transfers, do you think that has a is part of the impact of that? Because new guys coming into the system? I think anytime there's competition and there's pride and passion for the for the game, that can happen. Um, are there, there are a number of new people, 50-some new faces from a year ago. So, And as I mentioned, there's uh, the depth chart is, I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> there's a few. I mean, there's a few positions I could tell you have a pretty good idea, but there's a bunch that really don't know yet. Can you give a little summary of uh, Fernando and... and uh, Chandler and, and CJ's performances so far in the first five, six days of camp? They're doing a, they're doing a good job. I uh, really like the quarterback room. Sterling's, Sterling's been great for that group. Um, also like the younger guys, you know, Malai, Brady, and EJ, and those guys, like they're doing a good job too. But uh, there's a you know, certain amount of reps, and all those three guys, Fernando and Chandler, CJ have all done some good things. So just got to continue to get them reps, you know. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, routes on air, one-on-ones, um, seven on team reps, the meeting time and the walkthroughs are invaluable. So just continuing to get those guys more and more comfortable so they're able to, because uh, I think they're doing a good job of knowing what to do and then it's just a matter of every day being a little better executing. That's what it ultimately is going to be about, moving the team down the field. But, Important. Has your goals changed in terms of short term versus long term? Uh, how so? Do you think just one one season at a time now versus in the past? Have you thought three or four seasons? Um, well, we've always the most important day is always you know today. The most important game is the next game. The most important season is the next season. So I've never thought about it in terms of you know planning. I guess for five years because there's so many variables. The difference in recruiting is, is, you know, you'd have freshmen come in and you would see, okay, you could project a little more of what your team would look like in three years or something. But right now, I mean, the teams change so much from year to year. So in that way, yes, it is more short term. You don't see hey, what the team could potentially look like in three years or four years. I mean, the, te the teams change in this environment twice a year. I mean, after the regular season, December, and then uh, and again in spring. So, yes, that's changed significantly. I mean, yeah. It's totally different than it's ever been. I was just thinking whether you just think one season. Well, you have to because you don't. In the past, you thought maybe three seasons. Yeah, I don't know. In the past, we thought, thought three seasons, but we knew that there was guys on the team that would be here in three years, and you kind of had a better. The roster management was different, no doubt about it. Um, so, yes, in terms of the roster management, but, you know, the world we live in is like now, you know, today's practice, <laughs> the next game, this season, that's, that's all that matters to us. And that's no different than it was before, but I would say the roster management, you had a much uh, clearer picture of what was to come than you do in this era. The running back room's obviously real deep, but uh, Jamal Wiley, freshman showing up this this fall had a really nice TD run and seems to be running with, with power and some burst can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing out of him yeah he's a good sized guy uh, again it's real early I think he's doing a good job but just a lot of unknowns yet so glad he's here
you talk a little bit about what Tobias and Keon bring at, at receiver from the portal? Yeah, uh, Tobias can really run. You can see that. He's got a big frame. Um, and he's been running every consistently in practice. Uh, so the ball will find him. Uh, he continues to work like he's working. And the same with Keon. I mean, Keon's a, a twitchy guy, and uh, he attacks the ball. And so he's, he's shown some really good things as well. So really really excited about uh, both those guys but they just got to continue to stack these days. Corey at tight end might be one of the fastest tight ends I've seen out here. What does he bring to the field and how do you plan to use him? Yeah a number of different ways. Uh, he, he does add a, a different element. Um, he can line up a bunch of different spots. You can put him at tight end, you can put him off the ball, you can line him up in the backfield, you can flex him out, you can put him at the number one, you can put him in the slot and uh, then you're kind of looking at you know how what are the matchups like and how are they defending us with he being one or two tight ends on the field or, or one tight end is it you know I, I just think there's a number of different ways and then he's just got to continue to, to stack those days as well he's done a really good job since he's been here he's put on a bunch of weight um, and uh, he's not a as tight ends go he's not a huge guy but he is twitchy and uh, the catch and run element uh, has been noticeable just in a short sample size here. Can you block if needed? Yes. He's a very willing blocker. He's a very coachable guy. What are your thoughts on Trevor Rogers? Done a good job. He's a youngster. Swimming a little bit like all freshmen uh, newcomers. Um, but he, you know, we're really glad that he's here. He's got, he's got height and length and he can run. And so uh, I think it's just a matter of, you know, everything we're doing it's really a first for him but uh, he's competitive out here he's uh, jumped in and uh, I think he's done a really nice job but again just a young guy that's learning a ton with all the experience you have at that position is there any chance he'll get playing time this year we'll see um, like I told you before I mean in that that room in particular I mean, there's just anybody's ball game you know like anybody in there can earn the right to play there's a bunch of guys who have the ability, and it's a matter of what they do in practice. And I would not write him off uh, at all right now. You know, we want all those guys to come out here and compete uh, day in and day out. And then when the first game gets here, we'll see where we're at that week. And it'll continue to evolve throughout the season, as it always does. I mean, we weren't sitting here last year talking about Teidu Luabe, you know, uh, at this point in the season. You know, he was a young guy. We were glad he was here. He was learning a lot. And then halfway through the season, he becomes a starter and he did what he did. So uh, just I don't think you'd be too quick to judge anybody at this point. A few injuries yesterday. Any chance that any of those guys missed the opener? Um, don't anticipate that. Don't anticipate that. Uh, we'll see where that goes. That's that's a conversation for the doctors and uh, the trainers and and the uh, players. But from what I understand, uh, we don't have a shouldn't have an issue with that. What do you say from T.J. Boulder so far? Yeah, uh, good sized guy. He's got really uh, he's got uh, flexibility and you know he's loose in there when he rushes. Um, coachable guy he's played before you can tell that so it's not like he's brand new I mean again in this era of college football you have newcomers but not all newcomers are just created equal some guys are coming from high school or maybe a maybe they came from another four year but they hadn't played before and then you have guys like TJ Bowlers who, and uh, Teddy Buchanan played a ton of football Marcus Harris so there's just a different different versions of newcomers and he's one that's played a lot um, he's got some pass rush ability and really glad that he's here where have you seen the added value of having your analysts have some more kind of hands-on roles with some of the rules changes that were made? Well, it's uh, it's been a long time coming, and we're really glad that they passed that rule, but we've got guys uh, in our program who can really help our team that are now allowed to uh, take a more active role um, out here on the practice field and in the meeting room. So, you know, on defense, you know, Mike Bruno on offense with uh, Winterhawk and Jock Upton and... Uh, you know, we've had grad assistants in the past, and those guys have always been able to coach. But, you know, Malik McMorris, Josh Drayden, those guys do a great job. And the, the place where it's, it's not very noticeable is with uh, Ryan Longwell, working with our specialist. Ryan has a uh, knowledge base that not many people have. You know, you, even throughout college and pro football, there's just not many people that have the expertise uh, when, when it comes to specialists. There's special teams coaches out there, and 
everywhere I've been and really every staff that I've seen, there's special teams coaches that are you know, schematic oriented, but the, somebody to, to be able to really teach the details to uh, snappers, uh, holders, hunters, and kickers. There's just only a handful of people in the country who do that, and Ryan's one of them. So he, it's been awesome having Ryan here. And uh, and Frizz, another guy that helps us out on special teams. So it's a big, big help. And it's also good for them because they get to coach more. Our players, it's better for our players, and uh, it's a, a win for everyone. So it's uh, about time. Well, well, gives you credibility since when he's very experienced. Yeah, automatic, Ad absolutely. And there's, like I said, I've been doing this a while and I've been around a lot of special teams coaches. I've visit, visited college and NFL teams who have special teams coaches, but very few have the specialist uh, expertise. I mean, guys, you know, can talk to the punters and talk to the kickers, but not, not like he does. It's just uh, that is a such a unique skill set. Uh, you know, I guess you'd relate it to like golfers have the swing coach. It's, can you, know, you give me an example? He's able to. Well, just I mean, he can coach them. Uh, <laughs> on the technique of punting and kicking. Most punters and kickers and snappers throughout the country, especially in college, they have, they go, like golfers do, they go to their swing coach. They have like their specialists, and there's only a handful of them in the country, but we have somebody on our campus, in our program, who has a history here, first and foremost, who's done it at the highest level, and he's on our staff. And so, from a recruiting standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, it's just a really unique, uh, it's a unique skill, and we're, you know, we're really fortunate and, and glad to have Ryan. He's been awesome. So, him having that ability now that this rule has changed is is really good for the program and and recruiting and and for these players. I mean, because again, it's just a, it's a specialty. You know? Ryan went from really struggling his freshman year at Cal to being one of Cal's best all-time kickers and a Packers Hall of Famer. Is the mental game a good element of what he brings to Absolutely. his coaching? Absolutely. You know, again, those guys' life, those specialists' uh, life, they, they, they get a certain number of plays, and you know, everybody knows whether they graded well on the play or not. Can't hide. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, the three technique, you guys would watch a play, and you, we'd ask you, well, how'd the three technique do? You, you may or may not know. <laughs> but. Kickers and punters and snappers and holders, you know exactly how they did on how, how well they did on that play. Um, and so there is the mental aspect is key. Uh, rhythm is key. The techniques and the su the subtleties of it. And that's where I, I think in cross college football, there's just not a ton of people that have the subtleties, the expertise in those subtleties that Ryan does. And that's why it's uh, so great for us. Thanks, coach. All right.